TGR. Hey guys, it's your boy Onyx, and Rudy's just gonna sit here. Um, so you're about to watch an Onimusha video essay that I put together, and of course narrated. And it just—I just, just want to introduce the video because it's kind of a very different feel to our previous essays. Uh, I was very chill. I, you know, just kind of wanted to have more of a conversation versus trying to tell a story, if you will. Um, so it does have a different feel. So bear with it. Um, but either way, I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I hope you really, if you liked what I talked about Onimusha, play the game, buy it, uh, support Capcom in this case, because I, I want more Onimusha on the Switch and I want this stuff to be ported. So, uh, anyways, uh, here we go. Enjoy. Onimusha Warlords is a game that caught my attention when I was in high school. At the time I had a PlayStation 2 and I went to my closest blockbuster. <laughs> That's a throwback for anybody that remembers. When I saw that big red box, that greatest hits box for the PlayStation 2 and saw the cover art of this really cool samurai looking dude, of course the Capcom logo, I was very, very interested. The game originally came out on January 25th, 2001. So it's been roughly 19 years since its original release. According to a very, very well-written Wikipedia article, the game originated from an idea to create a Sengoku biohazard, which is Resident Evil set in the Sengoku period. Ninja house filled with booby traps, similar to the mansion of Resident Evil, which was all quoted from the Wikipedia article. Thank you. In other words, Onimusha is indeed a Resident Evil type game with swords. At the time, I was very into the Resident Evil franchise, and seeing these comparisons and gameplay and in design, I was very much sold on that idea. As soon as I booted up the game, the intro grabbed me. The music was clearly amazing, but we will discuss that later because the remaster has been changed and we'll get to that in a moment. The story of Onimusha is pretty simple. Your main character, Samonosuke, is essentially trying to save a princess, Princess Yuki. So it's kind of a princess being saved, damsel in distress kind of story. Nothing too crazy or deep except the setting. The setting really is what sells it. Zombies and samurais in ancient Japan looks awesome and it's pretty great. Throughout the game you run into different characters including Kaede, a friend of Samonosuke's, and also Tokichiro, who is Nobunaga's servant. And that's right, our good friend Nobunaga Oda is the main villain. Or at least, for now he is. The story is more of a foundation, a simple reason to go out and slay some zombies with your katana. The last time that I played Onimusha Warlords was back in 2001 or maybe 2002. It's been at least 18 years since I've last played it. So jumping into the remaster, there's quite a few differences that are immediately obvious and that you have to take in. First, of course, is the graphics. Textures have been enhanced, running at 1080p, 60fps on the Switch, which is the version that I got, and I love that it's 60fps just like the original release on the PS2. But there are a few things to consider. The button layout is the same as the PlayStation 2, but there's a little caveat. The movement joystick, when you push it in, it pulls up the map, and a lot of the times in the middle of combat, I'll press the button, pull up the map, and ruins the immersion of the battle. The game was designed around tank controls, which kind of makes sense considering it came out in 2001, where tank controls were still a thing in the Resident Evil franchise. You can tell the combat and gameplay was designed around these controls, however, especially with the way the camera moves, which it really doesn't. You have pre-rendered backgrounds, so every time you go into a specific area of the screen, the camera changes. So tank controls are really the way to play the game. There are modern joystick controls which work fine, but it can be a little wonky. Sometimes the camera will shift and if you're going in a certain direction, your character Samonosuke or Kaede will keep running in that direction unless you press a different input. And it's all about the perspective of the camera as well. 
And you'll notice, if you play with the joystick, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't work 100% of the time. Besides that though, the combat is still the same, it's a pretty basic combat system. So you have your main combos with your different weapons, it's a melee attack that's usually 3 to 4 hits. And then you have a triangle button, <laughs> which uh, it's in regards to the PlayStation version, I'm playing on the Switch, but you know what I mean, it's a corresponding button placements on the controller. That's my muscle memory coming up from the original game or from the original playthrough back in 18 years ago. <laughs> but the triangle button or the Y button on the Switch uh, does a magic attack. Pretty simple gameplay, similar to Sekiro, just a lot simpler. You have parries, and each parry allows you to do a critical hit, which allows the enemies to die in one hit, and you get more rewards. So the game has a soul system. Every time you kill an enemy, their souls kind of float around, and you suck up the souls by pressing a button using your ogre gauntlet. It's a way to level up your swords and skills and magic. It's not very deep at all. This was a time before RPG elements were really a big thing in action games. So it's pretty, pretty simple when it comes to those leveling up. But it's it's pretty unique. The game is a lot more slow paced than Sekiro. Uh, you can stun lock enemies almost all the time and you can get stun lock yourself. There is some strategy to be had. The game is definitely a great foundation for what came later. And I really, really love Onimusha. I'm surprised it took this long to get an HD remaster. We went through the entire PS3 generation and no remaster there, so... Not sure why it took so long, but I'm glad that it is, and I would love to see the sequels uh, remastered as well. Onimusha 2 in particular was a fantastic title. There's also a point in the story where you switch with Kaede. You play as her for a bit, and it's really cool. It's interesting. She's a less powerful Semenosuke, takes a lot more hits to kill the same enemies as Samonosuke, and she doesn't have any magic. Or she can't suck up souls either, so she doesn't have the Ogre Gauntlet. She can't heal unless you have items, which is kind of unique. Uh, she is more nimble though, so you do backflips when you're locking on, and you hit back on the joystick, she'll do a backflip. So things like that. Um, I also forgot that you get an upgraded blade with Kaede, and when you get it, during the remaster, you get an achievement that says, I wish I had this sooner. And it was funny because I was thinking the same thing. I have forgotten that you get it at that point in the game. I don't know if you play later, asked Kaede. But it was just kind of funny that the game poked fun at the fact that you get a weapon pretty late in the chapter. And you kind of wish you did have it before because it's kind of cool and more powerful. But we do have to talk about the music. Or at least the controversy surrounding the music. So, the original game's music composer, who was quote-unquote... Mamoru Sam Samuragochi, butchered that, had a much more impactful tone. The entire soundtrack, the original soundtrack, was quite amazing. The intro movie in particular, that movement which was called Rising Sun, the way it was composed, orchestrated, arranged, it was just truly, truly beautiful. And it sold the idea of Onimusha and its setting for me. Unfortunately, the again quote unquote composer admitted in 2014 that he told his orchestrator Takashi Miyagaki to ghostwrite the music for the game, which Samurogochi took full credit for. So obviously, because of this controversy, Capcom decided to just redo the entire soundtrack, and it's not the same. Nowhere near, to be honest. The music you're hearing in the background is actually the original soundtrack. The remake soundtrack, again, it's unfortunately not very good. It pales in comparison and kind of basic. I wish they would have done something different. Uh, I'm assuming they did it different because they wanted to hold a higher standard, maybe a higher moral ground, the moral music being ghost written and whatnot. So it is what it is, unfortunately, but the original soundtrack is on YouTube, so just look it up and enjoy that mastery. Overall, though, the game is great. It is a fantastic beginning, uh, like I said earlier, a great foundation for the sequels that came later. Well worth the money and time investment. It's not a very long game at all. You can probably finish it between 5-7 to seven hours at most, and that's if you take your time looking at every nook and cranny. I would truly love to see Onimusha 2 and 3 remastered. Though I don't know how well this game sold, it's been roughly for about a year, and I know it took me a long time to get to it, but hey, it was on sale for $9 and I thought, why, why not? Hopefully Capcom decides to remaster the next two games, and maybe the fourth game, even though I never played Dawn of Dreams, I believe it was called. 
I believe it was a decent game, maybe, from the reviews. I don't quite remember. It's been a while. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I hope this video helps you consider, or maybe makes you consider, Onimusha Warlords. If you ever see it on sale, especially for 99 definitely worth buying. Uh, again, whatever, it's my two cents. I hope you enjoyed listening to my voice. And I'll just catch you on the next one. It's your boy Onyx, checking out. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more and stay up to date, subscribe, hit the little bell, and join our Discord. If you want to support the channel, please check out our Patreon or hit the join button below. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.